Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're talking about the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the third subdomain called Insert Tables, Charts, Smart Art, and Media. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at the domain with me. This video started to get a little bit long, so this is going to be a two-part series. This is the first video, and in this video, we're going to talk about insert and format tables and insert and format charts. Let's go ahead and jump into PowerPoint. We are talking about the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Insert Tables, Charts, Smart Art, and Media. We're looking at the subdomain called Insert and Format Tables. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to create a table. Let's go ahead and insert a brand new slide. We're on the Home tab. We're in the Slides group. We're going to click on Title and Content. On this new slide, we have a content box that allows us to insert a lot of different media types. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Insert Table. This little window is just asking how many columns and rows that we'd like to insert. And you can dictate to PowerPoint what the table should look like. On this window, we'll hit cancel because there's another way to create a table. We're going to go to the insert tab. We're in the tables group. I'm going to click the table drop down and we can do a few things. We can click insert table or draw table. You can also use this grid to create a table. So maybe I want a table that's five columns by five rows. We'll go ahead and select this. We're told that we should be able to insert and delete table rows and columns. With our cursor in this table, we have the Table Tools Layout tab. In the Rows and Columns group, you have the ability to insert above, below, left or right. You also have the Delete, so you can delete columns, rows, or tables. By habit, I'm a right clicker, so what I'll normally do is just right click on a table. And then above, I have all of the insert features that I had in the ribbon. Let's go ahead and insert one to the left. And let's go ahead and insert one below. Now, I want you to pay attention to the left side of this table. If you look carefully, I have that entire first column selected. Now, watch what happens when I click Insert Rows Below. Notice the PowerPoint went ahead and put in five new rows in this table instead of one like it did before. That's because I had those five rows selected. Had my cursor just been in one row, it would have inserted one. Same thing with delete, because I have those five rows selected, if I click delete rows, they all disappear. And if I put my cursor here in this first column, select delete, I can select delete columns and notice one disappeared. We're also told that we need to be able to apply table styles. With my cursor in this table, we have the table tools design tab, and we're in the table styles group. If I click the more drop down, I have light, medium, and dark, on the certification exam, if it has you modify one of these styles, you'll see light, medium, or dark in the description of the style, which will help you key in on a group that you should look in. That way you're not hunting and pecking through this list because there's a lot here. And then once you find the style that it wants you to apply, you can just go ahead and select it. And then finally, this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to import a table. So let's go ahead and delete this table. I have my cursor in this section. There are a few ways to do this. I currently have an Excel sheet open, and within this Excel sheet, I have some data. I'm going to hit Control C on my keyboard to copy that data, and then I'm going to paste it within this content box by using the keyboard shortcut Control V. I went ahead and pasted that information for me, and I can edit some of the data within this table. I'm going to do Control Z to undo what I did so that I can insert a table a different way. I'm going to go to the Insert tab. I'm in the text group. I'm going to click on object. I'll click create from file and I'll click browse. What I can do is select the Excel file that I need to insert and I'll click OK. Now this wasn't perfect for this example. The drawback to inserting a table this way is I don't have as much flexibility as far as editing the data. In order to edit this, I would need to double click and then I have the ability within this window to edit some of the data. So maybe this is supposed to be a six and this is supposed to be a seven. And then when I'm done, I can click out of it to make those updates. I'll be honest with you, that window we just had open when I played with it in Microsoft, I've seen it crash too many times. 
So it's not my favorite way of bringing in data, but it is something that you can do should you see something like that on the certification exam. We're looking at the subdomain called insert and format charts. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to create a chart. On my screen, I have a blank slide, the layouts, title, and content. And within this content box, I could click on this insert chart icon, which brings this window open and I have my different charts on the left hand side. And then I can choose one of the charts that fall underneath that chart type. For example, if I wanted the 3D cluster column, I could click there and click OK. And it went ahead and brought that type of chart in. And then I have this little Excel dialog box that I could begin manipulating to make the chart. I'm going to close out of this. I'm actually going to delete this chart. Because I could also go to the insert tab in the illustrations group, click on chart, which gives me the same window. We'll just go ahead and select OK for this. And then again, I get a chart placed within my slide and then a little Excel window so that I can begin building my chart. Again, we'll close out of this and we'll delete this chart because the subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to import a chart. I have an Excel file open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the chart in this Excel file. I'm going to copy this chart by selecting it and hitting Control C on my keyboard. I'm going to minimize this screen, go back to my PowerPoint sheet and hit Control V to paste that chart. Now we brought this chart in from Excel, but we could also use other programs like Word to do that. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to change the chart type. With this chart selected, we get the Chart Tools Design tab. Within this tab, in the Type group, we can click on Change Chart Type. So maybe we wanted a line chart, and we can just choose the one that fits our needs and click OK. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to add a legend to a chart. So with my chart selected, on the right hand side, I get the Chart Elements button, and I can click that. And within this group, I have legend. I have options to place it within this chart. I also have the more options, which will pop out this pane and give me just a little bit more flexibility with what I'm doing. Let me close out of this. I use the chart elements button to apply this, but on the chart tools design tab, I also have chart elements and I can make some of those same changes from here. The last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to change the chart style of a chart. With this chart selected, I have the Chart Tools Design tab. I'm in the group Chart Styles, and if I click this drop down, I have a few styles that I can choose from. So maybe I like this one with the black background, so we'll choose Style 9. Some other things that you should know is that you can use the Quick Layout to kind of change the chart quickly. You also have the Chart Tools Format tab. And maybe you need to add some shape styles to some of the elements within your chart. If you look here, went ahead and made that change. I select within this box, I can change it to have that purple outline and the white background. And I can also change some of the outlines here. So maybe I like six point. There's really a lot within these two ribbons and you should feel comfortable going between the two ribbons to make your changes.